day everyone. Welcome back to the Educator's Journal. Today, we're going to discuss the socio-emotional development during the early childhood or the preschool years. Regine will elaborately discuss to you the key concepts that we need to understand during this stage of human development. This is a three-part video presentation and this one is the third part. The first two parts, the physical and the cognitive development, is at the link in the description below. If you are watching this on Facebook, you can visit my page, The Educator's Journal. You can find videos there that is relevant to this topic. The PowerPoint presentation that was used in this video is also in the description below. If you have any questions or any comments, please write it down. We will discuss and answer that during our online discussion. Regine, you may now take the lead. Good day everyone! Now let us proceed to social-emotional development of preschoolers. Social-emotional development is crucial in the preschool years. We hear a lot of parents and teachers and preschool administrators say that attending preschool is more for socialization than for formal academic learning. During the preschool years, children learn about their ever-widening environment. Preschoolers now discover their new roles outside their home. They become interested to assert themselves as they relate with other people. A lot of very important social skills they will learn during the preschool years will help them throughout life as adults. These skills can even determine the individual's latter social adjustment and consequent quality of relationships in adult life. Let us have big ideas on preschoolers' social-emotional development. The development of initiative is crucial to the preschooler. A healthy self-concept is needed for preschoolers to interact with others. Environmental factors influence gender identity in young children. Preschoolers' social development is shown through the stages of play. The caregiving styles of parents and teachers affect the preschoolers' social-emotional development. Preschoolers are interested in building friendships. Let us start with the preschoolers initiative. Remember Eric Erickson's psychosocial crisis? There are eight, and the preschoolers deal with the psychosocial conflict of initiative versus guilt. Erickson's view of initiative portrays the emotional and social changes that happen during the preschool years. He believed that healthy preschoolers develop initiative are the tendency of preschoolers to want to take action and assert themselves. They will learn to create, invent, pretend, take risks, and engage in a lively and imaginative activities with peers. When a stimulating environment, the preschoolers' sense of initiative will grow. On the other hand, if the adults show overprotection, extreme restriction, and criticisms, the preschooler will develop guilt. As preschoolers go through the conflict of initiative versus guilt, they show so much energy in going initiative, imaginative play activities. Every place becomes a playground to explore, every single thing an interesting place to tinker with. Minsan yung mga magulang, nakikita nila yung mga anak nila bilang makukulit na bata base sa behavior nito. Parents and teachers tend to control the child through threats, intimidation, and other scary tactics. At doon nagsisimula sa isang bata yung tinatawag na guilt. Sinasabi din na yung mga batang palagi napaparosahan at nakikriticize, doon naiisip ng bata na salbahe siya, bobo, o kaya naman ay walang kwenta. Bukod doon, nagiging mababa din ang tingin niya sa kanyang sarili dahil hindi niya nagagawa yung gusto niya or nagfeel which is kaya lang naman niya ginagawa or gustong gawin kasi he or she has a purpose. And the key thing to remember is to apply judicious permissiveness. This involves setting realistic boundaries that keep preschoolers safe and respectful of self and others while allowing them greater opportunity to explore, take risks, and, it, and to engage in creative processes. Preschoolers will develop a healthy sense of initiative in an affirming, encouraging, and stimulating environment. Let us proceed to self-concept and the preschooler. 
By the end of toddlerhood, preschoolers come out with a clear sense that they are a separate and a distinct person. With their ability to make representations, they can now think and reflect about themselves. Self-concept refers to the way one sees himself a general view about one's abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. The preschooler self-concept mainly focuses on observable characteristics and his or her usual beliefs, emotions, and attitudes. And an important aspect of self-concept is self-esteem, which specifically refers to one's judgments about one's worth. Sinasabi na ang mga preschooler daw ay mga positive thinker. Once na may nagawa sila, alone, pakaramdam nila ay ang galing-galing nila. At kung nag-fail naman, still confident sila na mag-try ulit. Preschoolers need a lot of patience and encouragement from adults. And now, environmental factors and gender in the preschoolers' social-emotional development. As the preschoolers' ability to create schemas develop, they become capable of gender typing or the process of forming gender roles, gender-based preferences, and behaviors accepted by society. They come to form gender stereotypes. Preschoolers begin to associate certain things like toys, tools, games, clothes, jobs, colors, or even actions or behaviors as being only for boys or only for girls. Consequently, they form their own gender identity the view of oneself as being a masculine or a feminine. Dito nagsistart yung bata na kilalaning ng sarili niya kung nalalaman kung saan siya mahilig o saan, saan siya interesado. Maging sa laruan, sa kasutan, at sa iba pang mga bagay. Napakalaking impluensya ng environment sa pagkakilala ng isang bata. Either magulang, teachers, kaibigan, and even mass media nakaka-impluensya ang mga yan sa mga preschoolers para kilalaning ng sarili. Halimbawa, ang parents, ang expectation niyan, pagbabae ang anak niyan, dapat puro pang babae mga damit, yung gamit, yung kulay ng mga gamit, at pati sa mga laruan. Ganon din naman kapag lalaki yung anak. But, there are some instances na kahit lalaki, halimbawa yung anak ng isang magulang, tapos puro babae yung nakakalaro nito, syempre, ang nilalaro nun ay mga pambabaeng laruan tulad ng manika. And vice versa, kung yung babae naman na bata, ang nakakalaro ay puro lalaki, halimbawa ay ang kapatid niya ay puro lalaki, malamang ang mga nilalaro nito ay tulad ng baril, baril-barilan, kotse, hanggang sa paglaki, pwede nila yun madala. Kaya nagkakaroon ng mga babaeng tinatawag nating boyish or lalaki kumilos. Mas media and ICT which include television, movies, the internet, computer game, also offer various images of what it means to be a boy or girl. Ang school, ang school at ang mga teachers ay may malaking bahagi sa buhay ng isang bata. The preschool teachers should think thoroughly on how to present notions of what boys and girls can do, especially in the discussion about occupations or community helpers. Halimbawa lang nito ay yung sa paglilinis sa paaralan. Pag babae, madalas inuutos sa kanya ay yung pagwawalis o pagpupunas o paglalampaso ng sahig. Kapag naman sa lalaki, pag-iigib ng tubig o pagdidilig ng halaman. At least doon pa lang, na-orient na yung mga bata kung ano yung mga trabaho o mga gawain na angkop sa kanilang uh, gender. Let us have a quick look on what preschoolers can do. First, they start to express basic emotions in which they express what they like and dislike. They can talk about difficult feelings like anger, sadness, or worry they experience. Preschoolers also can self-regulate feelings and emotions, wherein they are willing to try something in order to learn more, even if unsure of a successful outcome. Also, they persevere when faced with challenging or new tasks. They accept brief delays in gratification and accept defeat well. They may have some fears, but it's not overly fearful, anxious, or nervous. And they may feel sad at times, but not to the point where they are depressed. And last for expression of basic emotions, they can also display self-appraisal emotions like shame, pride, or guilt. They play to learn a game and to gain mastery of a game. 
They show pleasure and enjoyment over their successful attempts or efforts and confidently join small groups, especially if the situation is competitive, and they seek assistance from an adult or child to solve a problem. Another one is receptivity to others' emotions or receptivity to emotions and having empathy. This is one of what preschoolers can do. Wherein they feel others' distress and act appropriately. For example, they help, they comfort, give, or suggest. Preschoolers also can emerge a sense of self in which they have the knowledge of self and basic roles of people in their environment. They can also talk about parts of the body and their functions. They talk about only specific abilities and characteristics. For example, they can dance or they can sing. They are helpful or studious. They can describe what primary caregiver can do and what they like and they don't like. They defend possessions with determination and can give reasons or justify why they acted the way they did. Preschoolers also can form attachments wherein they show preference for the company of significant adults and children, other than the primary caregiver over unfamiliar adults and children. Lastly, they can or they start to interact with other children, wherein they play with two or three children using the same play equipment. They participate in games with other children but play on their own way. They chat or converse with other children take turns and share toys with others. They also actively participate in classroom and group routines. And lastly, they play organized group games fairly. That is just a quick look on what preschoolers can do. Let us proceed to part and stages of play. Play is the main agenda of the preschool years. Play has a social dimension. As the preschooler develops, Social interaction with playmates increases. Mildred Parton in the 1930s did a study on children's play behavior which led to Parton's stages of play. This begins with a very young child's unoccupied stage. The child appears not to be playing but directs his attention on anything that interests him. Sa stage na to, hindi pa actually naglalaro ang isang bata kundi nagkakaroon pa lamang siya ng toy preferences or interests in a specific object. The second stage is the onlooker stage. The child spends time watching others play. He may talk to them but does not enter into play with them. Dito naman sa stage na ito ay ang isang bata or isang preschooler ay nagmamasid pa lamang or pinapanood yung mga bata sa paligid niya habang naglalaro. The third stage naman is the solitary play. The child starts to play on his own. He seems not to notice other children playing nearby. Di ba minsan napapansin natin yung mga bata na nagsasalita mag-isa habang naglalaro? Kasi wala silang ibang kalaro kundi yung sarili nila. Though may nakikita siyang ibang bata sa paligid, uh, the interaction between the toy and the child only exists. The fourth stage is the parallel play. The child plays with toys similar to those near him, but only plays beside and not with them. No interaction takes place. Parang ganun pa yun sa solitary plane. Dito, sa stage na to, ang mga bata or mga preschoolers ay may sarisariling mundo sa paglalaro. Though pare-pareho sila ng, mga, ng toys or ng nilalaro, there is no interaction at all. Next is the associative play. The child plays with others. There is an interaction among them but no task assignment, rules, and organization are agreed upon. Sa stage na to, uh, yung mga magkakalaro ng mga bata ay walang napapagkasunduan ng mga rules, roles, task assignments. They just go with the flow and enjoy the play. Kabalik tara naman to ng cooperative play. The play... Yung cooperative play, the child plays with others bound by some agreed upon rules and roles. The goal is maybe to make something, play a game, or act out something. Dito naman, yung meron silang napapagkasunduan. Ang halimbawa nito is yung sa paglalaro ng jackstone. Sa jackstone kasi it's either may strictuhan or wala. 
katulad din dun sa rainbow rock, di ba, ang rule doon, bawal, bawal na kalabas ng nipin. O kaya naman sa bahay-bahayan, may mga bata na sabi minsan na, oy ikaw yung nanay, ikaw yung tatay, ikaw yung mga kapatid ko, ganun-ganun. So, yun yung example ng cooperative play. And now, let us proceed to friendships in preschool. As they continue to grow, preschoolers become interested in having friends. This should be encouraged in the preschool years as friendships benefit the preschoolers' development by providing stimulation, assistance, companionship, social comparison, and affection. This is according to Kostelnik in 2010. Through friendships, preschoolers are able to practice different social roles like being a leader, a follower, someone who takes risks, and someone who helps out and comforts. Sa edad na ito ng mga bata, mahalaga yung guidance sa magulang at teachers para sa pakikipagkaibigan ng isang preschooler. Dapat sila ay nag-expose sa bata para maranasan kung paano mag-start ng friendship, makipagkilala man lang, mag-maintain ng positive relationships, and even resolving conflicts. They should let the child to resolve conflicts. It always takes time and process naman. Let us discuss Baumann's caregiving styles. But first, let us define responsiveness and demandingness. Responsiveness refers to caregiver behaviors that pertain to expression of affection and communication. It refers to how warm, caring, and respectful the adult is to the child. While demandingness is the level of control and expectations, this involves discipline and confrontation strategies. These two are very important in caregiving. Baumid has four caregiving styles. The first one is authoritative which has high demandingness and high responsiveness. The second one is authoritarian. It has high demandingness and low responsiveness. The third one is permissive, which has low demandingness and high responsiveness. And the last one, the negligent, which has low demandingness and also low responsiveness. Let us tackle first the authoritative. It is said that authoritative parents have high expectations for achievements and maturity, but they are also warm and responsive. These parents set rules and enforce boundaries by having open discussion and using reasoning. They are also affectionate and supportive, and they encourage independence. Based on Barman's research, children of authoritative parents are appear happy and content. They are more independent. They achieve higher academic success and develop good self-esteem. They interact with peers using competent social skills and have better mental health, less depression, anxiety, suicide attempts, delinquency, and alcohol and drug use. And also, they exhibit less violent tendencies. Let us proceed to authoritarian. Authoritarian parents use this term discipline and often employ punishment to control children's behavior. They are unresponsive to their children's needs and are generally not nurturing. Children of authoritarian parents tend to have an unhappy disposition. They are less independent. They appear insecure, possess low self-esteem, they exhibit more behavioral problems, and perform worse academically. Also, they have poorer social skills and are more prone to mental issues. And lastly, they are more likely to, to have drug use problems. And let us proceed to permissive parents. Permissive parents set very few rules and boundaries and they are reluctant to enforce rules. Also, these parents are warm and indulgent, but they do not like to say no or disappoint their children. And the children of permissive parenting or caregiving cannot follow rules, have worse self-control, possess egocentric tendencies, and encounter more problems in relationships and social interactions. Let us proceed to the last one, the neglectful parents. Neglectful parents do not set firm boundaries or high standards. They are indifferent to their children's needs and uninvolved in their lives. 
These uninvolved parents tend to have mental issues themselves such as maternal depression, physical abuse, or child neglect when they were kids. And the children of neglectful parents are more impulsive. They cannot self-regulate emotion, encounter more delinquency and addiction problems, and they have more mental issues, for example, suicidal behavior in adolescents. That's all for Borman's caregiving styles. Let us proceed to the interaction between the preschoolers and the adults. A preschooler verbalizes feelings related to events that arise in classroom, home, and environment in a positive way. He speaks respectfully with adults using po and opo and or appropriate titles. He recognizes the importance of adults' ideas and experiences by listening and asking questions when they share this. He also clarifies rules and routines before abiding them. He shares personal perspective when he or she does not agree with or see the value of rule or routine. And he can take on another person's viewpoint. So a preschooler is already a sensitivity or meron silang pakiramdam. A preschooler knows when to stop asking questions when or when he is being makulit. And he cooperates to minimize conflict or tension. So, ang mga preschooler ay marunong nang makiramdam sa mga taong nasa paligid nila, especially sa mga nakatatanda. Alam nila kung kailan sila magsa-stop na magkulit or kung kailan sila magbe-behave. And also, the preschooler already know how to appreciate diversity. A preschooler asks questions that indicate he or she notices differences in socioeconomic status. He asks questions about new or different words or dialects and practices in the community. He also wants to talk about gender differences and roles. He regards everyone respectfully using proper titles or labels and does not resort to name calling. And the preschooler also have the willingness to make friends with other children and adults in different situations and locations. Locations like schools or neighborhood. So, ang mga preschooler, nagsistart na sila maka-appreciate ng mga bagay-bagay sa paligid. Uh, nagkakaroon na sila ng pagtatanong or natututo na ng magtanong tungkol sa mga napapansin or nao-obserbahan nila sa paligid. Sa pagkakaiba ng tao in terms of roles ang mga economic status, mga terms or salita na ginagamit, or yung mga dialekto. Kung dati, yung mga nakasalumuhan niyang mga tao, tinatawag niya niya sa pangalan, pagdating ng preschool age or stage, uh, doon na nagsistart ang bata na tawagin yung isang tao, lalo na yung mga nakatatanda, using proper titles or labels. At natututo rin yung makipagkaibigan ng isang preschooler sa kapwa niya bata at sa mga nakatatanda. The last topic that I will discuss is the role of caregivers in the social-emotional development of the preschooler. Parents and teachers have the most important roles in the child's life, specifically in the social-emotional development of the preschooler. There are tips that are given to them as the child's caregiver. A parent or a teacher has to greet each child with his or her name each day, be sincere and respectful to each child. Read the story books that deal about friendships and different feelings. Develop routines in the home or school that encourage working together and getting along. Help children learn to make rules and play simple games by providing opportunities for them to play in small groups. Play games that involve social interaction and teamwork. Observe how a child plays with other children. Teach him to request bargain, negotiate, and apologize. Help children understand and cope with strong feelings by giving them words that they can use to express how they feel. I can see you are sad about your pet. Angry at your sister. Use dolls, puppets, or pictures to demonstrate children how to express feelings appropriately. Acknowledge how the child feels. For example, one can say, Nalulungkot ka dahil hindi ka nakasama sa party. When we do this, we are able to model to the preschooler that it is important to listen and that having feelings, even negative ones, are okay. 
catch children doing good, affirm the efforts they make to accomplish something, be specific in your praise. Do not just say, good job, or very good. Instead, say, when I saw you pack away your toys, I felt really happy. Remember to always pack away. Also, read storybooks that deals with about friendships. For teachers, develop routines that encourage working together and getting along. That's all. Thank you for your cooperation. Keep safe, everyone. And that concludes our presentation for human development during early childhood or early preschool years. If you have any comments, any questions, or any clarifications, you can send a message to me or you can comment down below. You can also ask Ma'am Fatima if there are things that we haven't elaborated or you are having problems with. We will see you soon, guys, and stay safe during the quarantine. Thank you.